Remember Taylor series and single variable calculus? There's an equivalent to that in multivariable calculus. The idea is that you can take any function you like and approximate it with a polynomial with sufficiently many terms. Uh, the general formula is what's written here in single variable calculus. You've got uh, an infinite sum of some constants times uh, x minus a, where a is the point on the x-axis uh, that you want to center your function about. And then you get this string. Uh, the question in Calc 1 was, you know, what are the constants? What are the ci's? As it turns out, they are the nth derivative of the function evaluated at a divided by n factorial. That's all they are. Um, the zeroth derivative of the function is actually just the function itself and 0 factorial is 1 and of course anything raised to the 0 power that itself is not 0 uh, is equal to 1 as well so you ended up with uh, this expression for uh, Taylor series approximating you know any continuous function um, centered at x equals a well, in multivariable calculus, there's an equivalent to this. Okay, um, it's not exactly a, it's a series as much as it is a functional approximation. So there's a linear portion to it, right? And then there's a second-order portion to it. So this is linear, and this is second-order. Okay, linear portion should look familiar. Your function evaluated at, instead of the point, it's at the vector. And instead of the first derivative, you know, f prime of a, what you have is the equivalent of this is the gradient of the function evaluated at the vector in question. And then we dot that with the difference vector. Now the second order is where things get a little bit more interesting. You have this uh, expression, this, this object here, uh, H, which is the Hessian matrix, as it's called. And it's just a matrix of partial derivatives. And the rows of these things are the mixed partials, starting with the first variable, then evaluated at x. Um, not evaluated at x. Um, partial of x with respect to x, partial of x with respect to y, partial of x with respect to z. And then you do the same thing for y. You do first partial with respect to y at x, at y, at z, and so on. And when you're all done finding these par mixed partial derivatives, you evaluate them at your given point. And then this just becomes a matrix of numbers. And when you do this product, you end up with uh, second order terms. You might have x squared. You might have x times y. You might have y squared. Uh, you'll have or all of them. And there's the 1 half, which is uh, very similar to what we have here. So that's that. That's that's what it looks like in the abstract. I want to show you two examples and uh, at the end make a, an interesting uh, note about the result. Um, so here we go. Let's take this function as a function of x and y. And this would be a third order function because the sum of the powers in this term x squared y is 3. All right, this is a third order uh, function. And we want to find the tangent plane at this point, uh, x equals 1, y equals negative 2. So I've done a lot of the math here for you so that we don't kind of uh, go through all of the tedious steps. But basically, you evaluate the function at the point. We get negative 10 in this case. You take the gradient of the function. Uh, that's just the first derivative with respect to x and the first derivative with respect to y. You get this expression. You evaluate the gradient at the chosen point. Um, so just you know, substitute x equals 1, y equals negative 2, and you get the gradient evaluated at the point is negative 4, uh, positive 4. Then the linear approximation is going to be pretty much what, what it looks like in, in the Calc 1, you know. Uh, again, I'm, I'm making uh, comparisons here. It's not the same thing. You have f evaluated at a plus f prime evaluated at a times x minus a, right? This is the Calc 1 version. In multivariable calculus, the equivalent, again, is the function evaluated at the vector 
this gradient represents the first derivative evaluated at the vector, and then x minus a becomes this, this vector, this difference vector here. So you go through, you um, carry through with the algebraic steps. Take note that this is a dot product. So it's 4 times x minus 1, and then negative 4 times y plus 2. These are, these are vectors that you're dotting. Then you do all the algebra, and you end up with this as your uh, tangent plane. Tangent plane at 1, negative 1. Well, really at 1, negative 2, 10. That's, that's where the, at this point, this plane is tangent to the function that we were given up here. So now let's go through and find uh, the second order stuff for this function. So there's the function again, just to remind you, and there's the point that we're looking for. Uh, recall the gradient. Well, now we're going to take the first partial, uh, I'm sorry, we're going to take the partial derivative of this with respect to x, then with respect to y, get 2y and 2x. We'll take the uh, derivative of this with respect to x, and this with respect to y, and get 2x and 0. Then we evaluate this at x equals 1, y equals negative 2, and we get this 2 um, by 2 matrix, which is the Hessian evaluated at 1, negative 2. This is our second order uh, term. So this is the full formula. Remember, this is the linear part that we've already done, the tangent plane, right, the tangent plane. And this is the second order part. So we're going to be focusing on just this portion. And this involves matrix algebra. A quick review of matrix algebra. Uh, you, you should already be familiar with it, but just to tell you what we're doing here. I'm taking this row multiplying by this column, so that's going to be negative 4 times x minus 1. That's where this part comes from. And then I've got 2 times y minus 2. That's where this portion comes from. Then I do the same thing down here. I now take this row, multiply by this column, 2 times x minus 2, 0 times y plus 2. And then I simplify the stuff. Now, once I do that, this again is a vector product. So I'm going to take x minus 1 and uh, I'm sorry, it's a dot product. I'm dotting these two vectors. So x minus 1 times that. That's where this term comes from down here. And then y plus 2 times this. And that's where this term comes from down here. And that 1 half is still out front. We haven't really done anything with it yet. Carry through with the algebra. Be very careful to line up your terms. Make sure everything works out nicely. And then we find this is the second order uh, portion. So, we have this. This function, at this point, we're going to add the linear portion, the tangent plane, and we're going to add the second order stuff, and we will get minus 2x squared plus 2xy, plus blah, 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 all that. that. This is the second order approximation. This is the full second order. Okay. Now, to visualize this real quick, I've already uh, opened up a GNU plot window. And I want you to have a look at what's in this window. So GNU plot lets you... Um, store things in memory. So I said f of xy is equal to x squared plus uh, x squared times y plus 3y minus 2. When you're doing exponents you have to do the double asterisk and you can't write 3y, you have to write 3 times y. Uh, I said the linear approximation is just lin of xy, that's the name of it, I decided to give it. Um, negative 4x plus 4y plus 2. And then I said 2. Now, this is the second order approximation. I didn't feel like typing that, so I just wrote 2. 2 is equal to the linear part plus this second order stuff that we figured out. And now what I'm going to do is plot uh, f of xy, lin of xy, and 2 of xy all together on the same uh, 
graph. So there it is. Make this a little bit more square and put a grid down there. And you can see f of xy is red. The linear plane is, the, the tangent plane is green. And the second order approximation is blue. And as we rotate and zoom, we can see that the tangent plane does a pretty decent job of it, but the red function does, uh, I'm sorry, the, the second order does an even better job, which is what we would expect, right? I mean, this is, I hope, what we would expect from it. Uh, we can get rid of the transparency by just going to set hidden and replot. The only thing is it changes the colors around, so it makes the linear approximation blue and the second order approximation a darker blue. It's, it's this one that's wedged between the, the bottom one and the top one. And so we can see all three of these things uh, in space, and it's pretty nifty. Now, a really nice result, and, and it shouldn't be surprising, uh, the second order approximation of any quadratic form is exact. And what that means is that if I take any second order um, quadratic form, right, where the sum of the powers is equal to 2, well, it's going to be exactly that. And so I went through and I computed that. Uh, to show you what the equivalent of that looks like in single variable calculus, let's take a quick trip over to um, GeoGebra for a second. Okay, and so this is what we have for you know, a Taylor approximation of order one is just the tangent line at that particular point. I'm sliding A back and forth. The second order is, of course, some polynomial, third order, fourth order, fifth order, and so on. I made it go up to 10. And you can see that the more we take out, the more terms we take out, the, the better it wraps around this function. Look how far out we go when we're at the 10th order and really we're only good for a very short interval for the first order right now I can change this function around to be whatever I want so let me go and make this a quadratic equation so I'll do like 2 times x squared minus uh, 3 times x plus 1 I don't know I'm just making up a quadratic and I'll press enter right so same kind of principle applies. The first order is just the tangent line at that point. But now, the second order is exactly that function. And notice that that g of x here, this red function, it doesn't change because all the other terms go to zero because it's second order. It's order two. It's exact. Same thing happens in multivariable calculus. Let me minimize this and go back to our math here. So that means if we take this and we find the linear tangent plane approximation right and again evaluate the function at 1 take the gradient evaluate it at, at 2 3 and find the linear approximation there it is very nice uh, we can get an exact approximation by taking this matrix of partial derivatives um, it's just numbers there's nothing to evaluate it at and then we go through and we do again the math this times this um, note first of all that I got rid of the one-half because I just took all these twos and divided them by two um, so this by this gives us that and when we count up all our terms right this is remember this is just the second order this is not including the linear portion but when we do take the second order terms and the first order terms and we add them together like magic only not it's mathematics we get the exact function back so there you go I hope this video was helpful um, please let me know if you have any questions and uh, have fun graphing and finding approximations <laughs>